the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. It was King's barking that called the sergeant's attention to the young Indian lying beside the trail. He stopped the team at once. Oh, no. Oh, your husband. Oh. Well, it's Kalik, the chief's son. Sergeant. What's the matter? That, that pain. You're ill. Uh, We're not oh. far from town. I'll get you to the doctor's fast. No, I can't walk. That's all right. I'll carry you to the sled. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. It was the winter of 97, and the hospital hadn't been built yet. John Warren was the only doctor in town, and the sergeant drove directly to his cabin. It was nearly midnight, and there was no light in the cabin. Looking! But the door opened almost at once in response to the sergeant's knock. Sergeant Preston. I have a patient for you, Doctor. Oh, bring him in. I'll light the lamp. All right. Put him on the cot. Sir. Right. Oh, an Indian. His name's Kalak. His father's Ron Yu, the chief of the Beaver Rapids tribe. I found him lying beside the trail. He said he was in pain. Where? His stomach, I think. We'll get him undressed. Ron, you, haven't you had some trouble with him? Some, Doctor. He didn't like the idea of so many white men coming up here. He's ruled the Beaver Rapids district like a king for years. But both Kalak and his sister went to the mission school. The old man's getting used to our ways now. Any idea what's wrong with the boy? Yes. Just open his shirt. There. Mm. There seems to be a swelling. It's appendicitis. Acute. I'll have to operate. Will you stoke up the fire and put some water on the boil, Sergeant? Of course. I'll get my instruments ready. There's no time to lose. The sergeant helped the doctor with his preparations. He held the Indian as the doctor gave him an anesthetic. But Kalak was too weak to struggle. The doctor pointed out the instruments he would need, and the sergeant stood by to hand them to him. The operation began. The doctor worked swiftly. He had nearly finished when King growled low in his throat. The sergeant turned to see what was the matter and saw a face at the window, the face of an Indian. It disappeared almost at once, and the sergeant turned back to the doctor. Is that it? <sighs> yes, all finished. Very neatly done. I'm afraid. Of what, doctor? Peritonitis. It was too late. There's a chance, but that's all. The sergeant and the doctor sat beside the young Indian all through the rest of the night. Toward morning, he roused a little. He twisted and turned. And then suddenly he tried to sit up. He cried out and slumped back. The doctor bent over him, listening for a heartbeat. No, Sergeant, he's gone. Too bad. A few hours earlier and we might have saved him. You did your best, Doctor. No one could have done more. It was too late. It won't be easy telling Ron you, but I suppose it'll be my job. You'll take the boy back to Beaver Rapids? Yes, but I can't go today. I'll have to make the trip tomorrow. It's too bad. That was Monday morning. The sergeant left Dawson for Beaver Creek at noon the following day, and he reached Terry Mason's trading post, only a few miles from Ranu's village, at 7 o'clock that evening. Okay. <laughs> Terry heard the dogs and came out to greet the sergeant. Hello, you're just in time for supper. Hello, Terry. Want me to give you a hand with the team? You're staying the night, aren't you? Why, thanks, but I can't even stay for supper. I'm driving on to the village. Do you think that's wise? Under the blanket there... Young Kalak. He died in Dawson yesterday morning, Derry. I'm taking him home. I heard about it. You did? How? Oh. oh, it's cold, Sergeant. Come inside for a minute. I don't understand. Uh, come on. Oh, 
How did you hear about Kalak's death? A meerkat. That ornery brother-in-law of the chief's. He was in Dawson when Kalak died. He stopped here this morning on his way back to the village. Oh, well, I won't have to break the news to Ron, you after all. No, but you'll have to explain. What had Kalak done that you had to kill him? Kill him? That's the way I got him from Meerkut. You and a man in a white coat, that's all he would say. I suppose there'd been a fight. No, but... no, Terry. The boy had appendicitis. Dr. Warren operated on him, but it was too late to save him. Peritonitis had set in. It was a natural death? Of course. Meerkut. I remember now. Remember what? I was helping the doctor during the operation. King started to growl at someone outside the cabin. It was an Indian at the window. It must have been Meerkut. And he saw the doctor operating. Yes, he must have. The man in the white coat. He was wearing one, yes. Well, Meerkut's story is that you and the doctor killed the boy. And that's something Ranya will believe. That we'd kill the boy for no reason? And the old chief used to call us white devils. Lately, he's learned to tolerate us, but he's never learned to trust us. Do you think you can make Ranya understand about operations? I'll have to try. Uh, Meerkut may understand. He probably knows that you and the doctor were trying to save Kalak's life. But he'd like nothing better than to make trouble for the old chief. Make him do something foolish. Get him thrown in jail. Then Mia Kut would take over the leadership of the tribe. Sergeant, my advice to you is not to go near the village. I must. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's the old law for on you. He may kill you, Sergeant. Or try it anyway. There's one chance of making him understand. How? To his daughter, Tina. I don't know. He might listen to her. She's still at the village, isn't she? I suppose so. I haven't seen her lately. She worked in the hospital when she was going to school at Whitehorse. I'll be on my way, Terry. If you don't get back here by noon tomorrow, I'm going to send word to headquarters. With Tina's help, I think I may persuade the old chief his son wasn't murdered. Come on, King. It was less than an hour's trip from the post to the village. The sergeant traveled along the frozen surface of Beaver Creek as far as the rapids. Then it was necessary to take the trail through the forest. The Indian drums throbbed louder and louder as he neared the village. When the team emerged from the forest, the sergeant could see a great fire in front of the chief's lodge. The young men of the tribe were dancing around it. Boy dance. On King! The sergeant called on King for more speed, and a few minutes later he drove into the circle of light cast by the great fire. The dance broke up at once. The braves crowded around him, but the sergeant paid no attention to them. King! He turned to Ranyu. Ranyu, I have brought your son home. He is dead. He is with Manitou. Let me see. I show you. Miakut, the chief's brother-in-law, ran to the sled, threw back the blanket that covered Kalak, and opened his shirt. He pointed to the scar left by the operation. There. There, Mark, left by a white man's knife. You have killed my son, Red Goat. No, Ranyu. The white medicine man tried to save his life. He used the knife to set free the evil spirit in your son. But he was too late. A white man's lie. Spirit cannot be hurt by knife. The boy had appendicitis. You killed him. Ranyu, where is your daughter? Where's Tina? Tina will die too. Too? What do you mean? I tell you what he mean. Tina, sick. She sent Kalak to Dawson for doctor. Instead, doctor kill him. You know he didn't, Miyakut. And Kalak didn't have a chance to tell us about Tina. But you were in Dawson. Why didn't you? Nothing can save her. No. Kalak and Tina turn away from their people. The gods are angry with them. Kalak is dead, and Tina will die. Where is she? I want to see her. No, Redcoat must die too, Ranya. It is will of God. Tina! Sergeant, Sergeant Preston. She's in your lodge, Chief. I'm going in there. No. Stand aside. He not dare shoot. I don't want to, Ranya, but I must see Tina. You heard your daughter. Let me pass. The old chief stood firm for a moment. Then he turned slowly, opened the door, and stepped aside. The sergeant brushed past him into the hut. Tina was lying on a pallet in the far corner. Tina. Sergeant, where is the doctor? I didn't bring him. We didn't know. Kalak wasn't able to tell us that you were ill. You must get him. It's too late for me. Already I find it hard to breathe. But I could not keep the others away. They do will get it. The doctor must come quickly with serum. What's wrong, Tina? It will be epidemic. I am sure. It is the diphtheria. You're sure, Tina? Yes. Bring the doctor. 
I will if I can persuade your father to let me go. Why should he stop you? Because Miyakut has persuaded him that the doctor and I killed your brother. He had appendicitis, Tina, and the doctor operated on him. But he died in spite of everything we could do. Oh, poor Kalon. I knew he not well. I wanted someone else go to Dawson. It was I who sent me a cut after him. But tell my father to come here. Here he is now. As the chief entered the lodge, King slipped in behind him and trotted over to his master. Quiet, boy. Father, come closer. What? What do you want? You must believe what I say. Ronio, believe what he sees. The sergeant and the doctor are good men. They wish our people well. No. What Miakut has told you is not true. They did not kill my brother. I have seen Scar left by doctor's knife. But he was trying to save Kalak. No. Father, do you wish me to live? No, oh, my Tina. There is only one person who can cure me. It is the doctor. You must let the sergeant go back to Dawson and bring him here. He will never come back if I let him go. I promise you, Chief. No. You are my prisoner. If Tina dies, you will die. I have decided. This is Mia Cut's counsel. The white men will hang you if you commit murder. Their law is not my law. But they are stronger than you. It is time we fought against them. More of Mia Cut's counsel. The red coat is my prisoner. Wait a minute, I have an idea. I'll stay here, Ronyo. I won't try to get away. Oh, but, Sergeant... Here's my gun. I won't make any trouble. Ah, that is good. All I ask is that you let King carry a message to headquarters for me. Dog will carry a message to Dawson? Yes, he's been trained to do that. I'll write a note and attach it to his collar. He'll be at headquarters in four hours. The doctor should be here by morning if he leaves immediately. No. With medicine for Tina. No. No, I, I cannot read what you write. You will send for more redcoats to save you. The doctor will come alone. My men will guard trail through forest. If others come with him, they will shoot to kill. The doctor will come alone. He too will be my prisoner. He too will die if Tina dies. All I ask is that you let me send the message. Right. The sergeant took out his notebook and began to write. As he did so, Tina whispered to him. This is not wise. I cannot live. You must, if you want to save your people. The doctor and you will be alone. If I die... Me cut persuade my father to carry out his threat. I promised the doctor would come here alone. I didn't promise that others wouldn't follow him. Then there will be much fighting. No. Forget about me. Later tonight, you must try to escape. I'm staying here. Hey, King. <laughs> Steady, boy. There. Headquarters, King. The inspector. Headquarters. <laughs> Let him out, Ronyo. Uh -uh. Go, King! In Dawson at midnight, the inspector was roused by someone knocking on the door of his cabin. Who's there? Constable Downey, sir. Just a minute. Oh, is that King? Yes, sir. Come in. The sergeant sent him with a message. Here it is, sir. Have you read this? Just the first page. I saw it was urgent, sir. Quite right. I'll go and see the doctor at once. Now, well, don't worry, King. The sergeant will get some action. Ten minutes later, the inspector was reading the sergeant's message to Dr. Warren. So, Ron, you believe that the doctor and I committed murder. The most serious part of the situation is that Tina has diphtheria. Other members of the tribe have been exposed. She's afraid there may be an epidemic in the village. She wants the doctor to bring serum. I'll start at once. Wait. I obtained Ronyu's permission to send for him. The chief insists that he must come along. That's all right. I know the way. You haven't heard what isn't all right. Listen. Now, the chief has sworn that if Tina dies, both the doctor and I will be executed. Ronyu is grief-stricken. It's entirely possible that he might try to carry out his threat, especially since Meerkat is egging him on. It should be explained to the doctor. It's risky business. Well, it doesn't matter. There's more. I've given up my weapon and am being held as a sort of hostage. Irregular, I know, sir. But it was a solution that used the least time. The point is that I'm not in a position to give the doctor protection. But, doctor, he suggested I send a couple of men on ahead of you. Circle the woods where Ronyu will have guards posted. Take up that position on the ridge to the west of the village where they can see everything that's going on. I'm to travel alone? It's entirely up to you, doctor. You'll be safe as long as Tina lives. 
If she doesn't... Inspector, a doctor has just as much sense of duty as a member of the force. I'll get my bag packed, harness my team, and be on the trail in half an hour. I guessed what your answer would be. That's Constable Downey outside with our team. We'll be traveling ahead of you in just a moment. King's out here with the constable. Here, King. Hello, King. I'm going to leave him with you, Doctor. You can't miss the trail with him to guide you. No. You'll take me straight to your master, won't you, King? The sergeant watched beside Tina's pallet all through the night, while Ranyu sat on another pallet in the far corner of the lodge. At daybreak, the sergeant rose to put more wood in the stove. As he closed the door, he noticed that the chief's head had fallen forward on his chest. Thinking he was asleep, he walked over to put a blanket around his shoulders. There was something about his breathing that made the sergeant put his hand to the chief's forehead. It was very hot. Fever. Gently, he eased him back on the pallet and covered him well with blankets. What is the matter, sergeant? Your father's ill, Tina. I was afraid. The doctor will be here soon. It will be... Too late for me. Don't say that. The membrane is forming in the throat. As soon as I will not be able to breathe. Isn't there something I can do? Yes. If you have great courage. Anything, Tina. There is a bundle of goose quills on the shelf. Select one of them. The strongest one. Strip it of the feathers. Cut it to a length so long. Oh, I think I understand. The sergeant found the quills and prepared one as he had been instructed. He showed it to Tina. It is good. See? It is a tube. A tube such as the doctors use. Tina. In diphtheria, the membrane forms in the throat. It is impossible Breathe. Doctors. You don't have to explain. I've seen the operation performed. It's called a tracheotomy. You have a small knife. Very sharp. Yes, but I'm not a surgeon, Tina. It's a very simple operation. To insert the tube. That is all. I have seen a nurse do it. One does not have to be a doctor. The doctor should be here very soon. How soon? Go and see. Is, is he coming now? The sergeant went to the door and looked out. The Indians were seated in a great circle around the campfire. Every face turned toward him. He looked toward the east, toward the forest. There was no sign of Dr. Warner. He closed the door. No, not yet. I cannot wait. If you will not do it, I must do it myself before it is too late. You can't do it yourself. Then please. Very well, Tina. I'll have to sterilize the quill. Please hurry. The sergeant made his preparations for the operation, watching the terrible effort Tina was making to breathe. He had no choice. He must go through with it. And it was a simple operation for a doctor. He listened, hoping to hear the sound of a dog team. There was only silence outside. At last, he was ready, and he knelt beside Tina. And then he suddenly realized Ranyu was sitting up, and there was a gun in his hand. You murder Kalak. Now you kill Tina. No, Father. Ranyu, Tina has asked me to do this. It's her only chance. Do not stop him, Father. If you kill her, I shoot. All right, Chief. The sergeant turned once more to his task. He closed his eyes for a moment, a silent prayer welling in his heart. And then he went to work. His hands seemed to have acquired an independence of his brain. It seemed to him that some other force was directing their movements, and that he was watching them from a great distance. But the movements were swift and sure, and in a matter of seconds, the operation had been completed. Almost at once, Tina relaxed. As the life-giving air found a clear passage and flowed easily into her lungs, she slipped into a deep sleep. Tina... There was no answer. She, she is dead. No, Ranyu, she's tired. She's sleeping. You must try to do the same thing. You, 
You tell the truth? I tell the truth, Ronyo. You're ill, too. You must rest until the doctor gets here. I, I go to sleep. Good. The sergeant sat down by the stove and watched his two sleeping patients. An hour passed. He was nearly asleep himself when someone knocked on the door. The sergeant picked up the revolver that lay beside Ranyu's hand. He slipped it into his holster and opened the door. All the Indians in the village were gathered in front of the lodge. One of them stepped forward. Me, Bartok. What do you want, Bartok? Make talk with Ranyu. I can't talk with you now. He's sleeping. He has a fever. Uh, that bad. Well, don't worry about it. The doctor will be here soon. He'll take care of him. Maybe white medicine man not get here. I'm sure he will. Maybe white medicine man get killed on trail. Now, wait a minute. Ranyu gave his promise that he would not be hurt if he came here alone. Sergeant, Indian hold big council last night. All Indians say red coat not bad man. Last winter, them bring food when Indians start. That's right, we're your friends. All Indian want peace with red coat. All Indian but Meerkut. What about Meerkut? Him say white medicine man must not come village. Him go into woods, him wait there. Him shoot medicine man. Meerkut's waiting there all by himself? Uh, Indian want Ranyu stop him. Ranyu can't. He's ill. Will you let me go after Meerkut? No, Sergeant. Indian want peace. Good, you're being wise. As the sergeant spoke, a volley of shots sounded from the woods to the east of the village. In the next instant, a police whistle shrilled from the top of the ridge to the west. The sergeant turned and saw the inspector and constable Downey starting down the slope. Bartok, here come two more redcoats. They're your friends, too. Tell them I've gone after Meerkut. Send them after me. Bartok, do. The sergeant sprinted out of the village. But when he reached the trail that cut through the forest, he slackened his pace a little. The firing still continued, and it seemed to be coming from both sides of the trail. Two guns, anyway. That means the doctor's still defending himself. Suddenly, there was a rustling in the underbrush to the left. The sergeant stopped his gun ready, but a moment later, King burst into view. King, old boy. Go on, boy. Lead me to the doctor. King plunged back into the forest. The sergeant after him. A few minutes later, he saw the doctor crouched behind a huge pine. The sergeant dropped to the ground at the doctor's side. A warm reception. That's Meerkut. Is Tina dead? No. I thought when I heard that first shot... No, this is entirely Meerkut's idea. I'll give him a chance to surrender. Meerkut, drop your gun. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. There's your answer. The inspector and constable Downey will be coming along in a minute. As soon as you see them, warn them to take cover. Yes. What are you going to do? I'm going to cross the trail a little farther on, and I'll circle around behind Meerkut. Come on, King. <laughs> After the sergeant crossed the trail, he started back toward Meerkut, but suddenly the shooting stopped. He's seen the inspector and Downey. He's trying to get away. Find him, King. King understood. They were tracking the man who had tried to ambush the doctor. The great dog led the way deeper into the forest. The sergeant followed him for ten minutes. And then King crouched at the edge of a small clearing and growled. The sergeant waited with his gun ready. Someone was forcing his way through the underbrush on the far side of the clearing. It was Meerkut. He burst into the open and the sergeant stepped out immediately. Up with your hands. Yes. The Indian dropped to his knees. No, no. No, not, not shoot. I'll take your gun. Uh, Rania, command me, shoot, doctor. That's a lie. I heard his orders. I swear. You can do your swearing before a judge. Oh, oh, oh. Now get going. When Meerkut was marched into the village wearing handcuffs, the Indians broke into a cheer. The doctor went to work at once, examining both Tina and her father. You've performed a tracheotomy, Sergeant? Tina asked me to. She couldn't breathe. Don't apologize. Isn't it all right? She's breathing, isn't she? Hand me my case, please. I'm going to give them both a shot of serum. After Ranyu and Tina were cared for by the doctor, he examined the other members of the tribe. He found symptoms of diphtheria in Bartok and another Indian. But they objected strongly to his using the hypodermic No, oh, no, Bartok, feel good. Him not need medicine. The doctor looked at the sergeant. Take off your coat and roll up your sleeve, Sergeant. You're going to give me a shot? You've been exposed more than anyone else, and I'm sure you'll set a good example. Yes, sir. The sergeant's example was all that was needed. The shots were given, and the doctor returned to his two critical patients. Late that afternoon, their condition improved, and the doctor allowed a suggestion from the sergeant to be carried out. The door of the lodge was opened. All the Indians were allowed to file past it. Tina and Ranyu smiled and waved at their people.
That night, the drums sounded in the village once again. But this time, the Indians chanted a song of thanksgiving. Their chief and his daughter would recover. The inspector, the sergeant, Constable Downey, and the doctor watched the scene from in front of the chief's lodge. They're happy that Ranyu and Tina won't die, but it seems to me they're even happier about getting rid of Mirkut. He's been a troublemaker for years. It'll be years before he bothers them again. You're charging him with attempted murder? That's right, doctor. Good enough. Now, uh, about this charge against the sergeant. Against me? This practicing medicine without a license. Oh. What about that? Do you want to make a complaint, doctor? Well, I think I should. I can't have everybody performing tracheotomies or there wouldn't be any business for me. Is that what he did? That's just what he did, and a good one, too. With the proper instruments, you might become serious competition, Sergeant. I really think Doctor, that I... would you forgive me if I promise never to do it again? <laughs> yes, Sergeant, I will. <laughs> good. I release the patients into your care, Doctor. As far as I'm concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> In our next adventure, Red Hansen and some of his gang were in their hideout cabin when another of the gang returned from town. Hey, Red, that man you shot died. We'll all be hunted for murder. Uh, stop worrying. You got the bank shipment? Can't face the robbery you're killing to us. But I saw Sergeant Preston and his dog coming to town a while ago. Preston, huh? Well, if he comes after us, there'll just be another killing, that's all. Sit down and forget about it. The Hanson gang is operating in the territory around Selkirk. Twice they have successfully committed robberies. The third time they struck, a man was killed. When Sergeant Preston and Yukon King finally pick up the trail of the gang, Preston may become a target for Red Hanson's bullets. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This program came from Detroit. Today's most popular heroes of outdoor adventure are heard every weekday afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mark Trail roams the wilderness, Clyde Beatty defies the beasts of the jungle, and Victor Borga entertains with five minutes of musical laughs. Tuesday and Thursday, there are the Indian hero Straight Arrow riding to uphold justice, Sky King zooming to supersonic action, and Bobby Benson, the cowboy kid, in tales of western daring. Listen to Mutual's Hour for Fun with Mark Trail, Clyde Beatty, Victor Borga, Straight Arrow, Sky King, and Bobby Benson over most of these stations every weekday afternoon. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.